Hello, everyone. It's my honor to be here and presenting to all of you our work about 53 giga ohm FDC input impedance multi channel neural recording amplifier with 0 0.77 microvolt IMS input travel noise for different implants. My name is Hai Alhan, and I am also author of this paper from Aarhus University, Denmark. My presentation will follow this outline. Let's start with the motivation of our research. Our work is a part of a European project that's called Hermes. And the ultimate goal of this project is to heal the epilepsy brain. And the main approach is to, is to transplant the immature brain tissue along with an electronic device to the epilepsy brain. And the implant electronics will record the brain activity by an analog from end and detect the seizure activity by a small spiky neural network and then provide some stimulation signal to train the immature brain tissue how to react to the seizure activity. Thus, this can help to heal the epilepsy brain. In this work, we will design the analog from end for such a purpose. Firstly, we will discuss the signal characteristics that our analog from end will deal with. There is several ways to classify the brain signal, as you can see in the left-hand side. However, in the seizure activity, it can be seen in two frequency ranges with a local field potential, LFP, and action potential, IP. In local field potential, they divide into two sub-catalogs, which are called ECOG and subcortical. But we will only concern the subcortical signal, which has the amplitude from 100 of microvolt down to 1 microvolt. According to the requirement of our biological partner, our analog from end need to be able to capture the signal with it down to around 10 microvolt. Regarding the frequency of interest, several research have found out that the seizure activity can have a very wide frequency range. In the baseline, the frequency of interest can be down to one to two hertz, while in a very high frequency oscillation of the seizure onset, the frequency can reach to over one to two kilohertz. Therefore, the analog from end should be able to operate in such a wide frequency range. Since the system will operate in a very small area where the image of tissue is transplanted and multi-channel emitted for recording. Thus, the electrode size should be very small, which leads to the high electrode impedance. In the left-hand side, we saw an example of the electrode impedance from the atlas neuron. The biggest challenge that we would like to discuss here is the impedance mismatch between the electrode due to the interaction of the electrodes and the brain tissue after the electrode being implanted into the brain. And this impedance is called electrode tissue interface impedance. And um, <clears throat> the interaction between tissue and the electrodes will create a layer, it called encapsulation layer that covers the electrode surface. And uh, this layer, it has a variant resistivity over time and it's not consistent for every electrode. And thanks for the study of the uh, McKenzie in heat uh, group. Uh, they are able to measure the encapsulation layer and uh, we can use it in our electrode tissue model uh, to predict the impedance mismatch caused by the encapsulation power um, layer. And we will use this graph, we will use this resource to determine the requirement of our CMRR and the input impedance of our analog from end. In this slide, the target requirement of our analog from end is discussed uh, for minimum signal of 10 microvolt. Uh, the input noise is required to be under 3 microvolt IMS, and the bandwidth of the analog from end should be over 2 kilohertz to cover both local field potential and the very high frequency oscillation of the epilepsy in the action potential. And um, as discussed in previous slide, the impedance mismatch will degrade the overall common mode resection ratio of our system with AC in from the electrodes. And 
the mismatch that caused by the electrode tissue interface is dominant here. So uh, we consider that the impedance mismatch to calculate the requirement for the input impedance of the analog from end and the instinct common mode resection ratio of the analog from end. So uh, we should target our system uh, common mode resection ratio of uh, 7 TDB. We have uh, the instinct common mode resection ratio and the uh, input impedance showing in the graph. So uh, let's review some uh, previous work to see if there is there any approach that can satisfy our requirement for this high input impedance. The structure that shown in this slide is a very well-known structure that called the capacitor coupler chopper instrument amplifier CCIA that achieve a very low noise performance due to the operation of the chopper. As mentioned above, uh, our the analog phone ends operate in a very wide range of frequency, including a very low frequency of one to two hertz. In this frequency, the dominant effect noise is the flicker noise, and the chopper is the best solution for the flick flicker noise problem. And the disadvantage of this structure is that the low input impedance due to the switching and the input capacitor, uh, which is not good for our application because we want a very high input impedance. The overall structure in this work accommodates the similar components as the previous one, except for the auxiliary parts at the input. And these auxiliary parts have to push the input impedance due to the phone with modulation operation. And um, this technique provides a really good input impedance improvement. However, it's still too far from our need uh, so, uh, on, and also the, the, the use of the auxiliary switch part might cause a really large mismatch and it will reduce the overall common mode resection ratio of the analog domain. The two previous slides uh, present the work using the chopper for reducing the flicker noise. The main drawback of that technique is the low input impedance, which is a very critical point for our project. And in this slide, we introduced a new approach uh, which used the body switching technique to reduce the flicker noise. Uh, in this technique, the body is switched and when it's switched, the charge will be released in a, a frequency, in a similar frequency to the body switch. And uh, after that, the noise will be filtered out later. Uh, and this technique will not affect the input impedance. However, it's introduce risk in the circuit such as stability and the lecture problem. After considering many approach, we come to a conclusion for the structure that we will use to implement. So for the input impedance uh, at the level of tens of giga ohm uh, at DC, the input must be a DC couple. So we decide to uh, use the buffer as a input buffer for high input impedance purpose. And by doing this, it will lead to two main issues. The first is a flicker noise. Uh, so we decide to use the big p mod transistor as the input and the allocated high power consumption for the buffer uh, to uh, make a low noise operation. And uh, since we have the multi-channel recording system, if two buffer and two electrodes for one channel, we don't have enough space for the electrodes uh, inside the, uh, the brain. So um, the reference electrodes and the reference buffer will be shared between uh, channels. And for low noise purpose, the CCII structure should be used at the main amplification stage. And for the high of overall common mode resection ratio, the Instinct common mode resection ratio should be high. Thus, uh, the share buffer and the impedance of the second state should be considered during the, the designing process. And uh, the detailed structure will be presented in the next slide. So, as shown in the figure, uh, our design including four channels of analog from end, 
and a six electrodes are required for four channels, as one reference electrode is shared between two channels. Therefore, we need total six buffer uh, for four channel analog from ends. And as the one buffer is shared between two channels, the impedance seen at the output of that reference buffer will have a mismatch with the signal buffer. And uh, this impedance mismatch will cause the degradation of the instinct CMR. Thus, the output state of the reference buffer should be optimized to balance the mismatch of the impedance at the share node. The buffer design using the PMOS at the input transistor for low flicker noise purpose. And also the power consumption of the buffer is optimized for uh, balancing the trade-off between the power and noise performance of the buffer. And uh, in the main application stage, um, the CCAI structure is used to uh, minimize the additional flicker noise uh, that can add into to the circuit. And uh, the CCI state have the fixed gain of 38 dB. And uh, in the last state, uh, a programmable gain control state is placed there uh, to adjust the gain uh, of the overall analog long ends. And the uh, PGR is can control the gain uh, from uh, uh, 0 to 28 dB, which makes which make the overall analog long end gain from 38 to 76 dB. As mentioned about uh, the buffer output impedance is optimized for reducing the impedance mismatch, uh, which affects the instinct CMR. However, it is not uh, enough. Therefore, in the CCII stage, we uh, implement an uh, impedance boosting loop to increase the impedance of the CCII stage. And the higher input impedance of the CCII stage, it can help to tolerate the better impedance mismatch at the input node of the CCIC. And uh, for creating the sub and low cut off frequencies, we combine the path C filter uh, with the DC support loop uh, to make, to remove totally the DC components. And, and uh, the low path filter is formed by the MOSFET resistor and the feedback cap. Uh, and the low cut off of that uh, uh, low batch filter is at 2 hertz uh, when uh, the additional pole uh, creating by the DC circuit loop uh, is between from 1 to 2 hertz according to our Monte Carlo simulation. In uh, the CCIA, the chopper is the main component to uh, separate the flick noise from uh, the interest signal. However, in uh, the operation of the, of the chopper, it requires some high frequency clock control that create the clock withdrawal phenomenon in the chopper operation. Of course, the uh, uh, clock withdrawal noise uh, is filtered out uh, due to the nature of frequency response of the GM1 and the BGA state. However, it's good if we can reduce the uh, clock withdrawal uh, from each source. Uh, normally, <laughs> in the um, chopper, uh, the symmetric T gauge is used for the switch uh, and uh, some approach they introduce the uh, the dummy switch in both sides of the main switch and uh, when the uh, dummy switch switch on or, or off it doesn't affect the uh, chopper operation uh, on reducing the flicker noise however if we slightly control the dummy switch to turn on and off to provide the opposite charge to the channel during the and the switching of the main switch. So it can help to reduce the clock withdrawal noise uh, and in the chopper. And uh, as you can see in the simulation, uh, in integration no method control, the dummy on way on and our uh, control, we slightly turn on and off the dummy switch. Uh, and we can see the improvement in the clock withdrawal noise. <coughs> The circuit operating frequency covers a range of the AC supply with a 50 to 60 Hertz. So we decided to use a, a battery powering approach in a custom made uh, shielding box to isolate the laboratory uh, instrument noise. And for 
transfer function uh, input the reference noise and for CMRR we use the SRS uh, 780 uh, for measuring it and um, for measuring the DC impedance we use the power shoot me uh, measurement uh, due to the small current that is trained by the analog moment so we connect on of the input in parallel to measure the total current and then we calculate the impedance for each input um, and uh, for higher frequency impedance measurement, we use the impedance analyzer, uh, which have the frequency from 20 to 5 kilo. And with the uh, two bit of gain control, uh, we can turn our gain for four level. It's uh, as so in the left hand side graph. And um, the bandwidth of the analog phone end is uh, from 2.2 hertz uh, to 2.4 kilohertz. And uh, the measurement of the existing common mode rejection ratio, uh, the uh, lowest common mode rejection ratio at the low cutoff frequency is 78.6 dB, uh, while the misband uh, common mode rejection ratio is on way over uh, 85 dB. And um, for better view of how this CMR means, uh, we plot the existing CMR with its requirement uh, as I discussed in the beginning in the next slide. And uh, as you can see in the left graph, um, the measures instinct CMR is always higher than the requirement. The requirement in the dark lines and the measurement in the continuous line. And also you can see in that same graph, uh, the measure input impedance is higher than its requirement. And uh, around uh, 800 hertz, um, the gap between the measure German results and the requirement is quite close, but still we have uh, the margin of 4.5% there. And um, talking about the uh, reference noise, input reference noise, uh, the overall measurement of the analog phone ends is uh, divided to two frequency range because we want to make it easy to compare with other work. So for the noise, uh, from uh, local field potential uh, up to 200 hertz. Uh, the input reference noise is uh, uh, 0.77 microvolt IMS. And for the action potential from uh, range from 200 hertz to 2.4 kilohertz, the value is uh, 1.75 microvolt IMS. And um, after all of the measurement, uh, we put our analog from end performance to a comparison table with other works. And here is the comparison table. The 3K advantage performance of our analog phone ends is impedance, the so noise performance, and the common mode rejection ratio. Among all of other designs, uh, our input impedance is the highest. And uh, the input reference noise is keep very low. Of course, with the trade off uh, of the power consumption and size of the design due to using the big. Uh, P mode resist, uh, transistor. And uh, the common mode rejection ratio of four channel analog from end um, it keep in a uh, quite impressed value of 85 dB in mid band. And so here we come to the conclusion. Um, in our research, uh, we consider the electrode tissue interface and the effect of the brain tissue on the electrode tissue interface impedance during uh, the phase of determining the requirement for our uh, input impedance of our analog phone end. And uh, after the designing process, we have the analog phone end which have a really high input impedance of up to 53 giga ohm. Uh, thus input impedance can help us to tolerate uh, uh, signal attenuation and also the impedance mismatch caused by the brain tissues. And uh, we have a really high common mode rejection ratio. We can help us to canceling out the common mode noise appear inside the brain. And um, the overall input in uh, reference noise is maintained and very low at uh, 0 0.77 microvolt MS uh, at local field potential and 1.75 at action potential. And uh, with this uh, good noise performance, uh, we can distinguish a uh, logic um, uh, minimum input signal 
uh, down to 10 microvolt and uh, with the wide frequency range up to 2.4 kilohertz and the adjustable gain from 38 to 76 dB, uh, our uh, RF phone end can work for both local field potential and action potential signal. Mm, thank you very much for your attention and now we are open for questions.